Hello, I'm Jana Elizabeth. Astana Music presents Maria Papa Petros with introduction by Vanessa Williams. Maria Papa Petros discourse on creating your own reality. Welcome. This is Vanessa Williams, and I want to bring you on a journey of a daily meditation, a time to relax, become one with yourself, quiet all the outside noise that lives in your head and in your daily life. Let Maria Papa Petros guide you into an experience that is none like any other. Feel your true self as you walk with Maria in her journey to take you to another place, a place that you need to visit whenever you need to feel whole. I've used this meditation daily whenever I need to check back in with myself and become one. Feel grounded feel whole, feel revitalized, tap back in to what your true essence is. Follow us on this journey. Follow us on this journey to peace and to fulfillment. Allow myself and Maria to take you to a place that's going to be comfortable, that reminds you of your sanctuary that's always available. Meditation One, Creating One's Own Reality. Today our subject is creating one's own reality. And I can just see you saying, wow, what is this all about? Well, before we get into details and what it is that I have to share with you today, I'd like you to know that whatever reality you're experiencing right now, you have, for the most part, created yourselves, not to say, that you have solely created yourselves. I'm a firm believer of God and the universe. And I do understand that everyone has their own version of God. Mine happens to be old fashioned one. It works for me to believe. And knowing that I am a creation of some infinite power, which I call God, I do my best to be in tuned with that power by staying open and listening, picking up the vibes and knowing them on the right track. When I say that you have created the reality you're living right now, I do mean it. And I can see again your face is saying, oh no, but Maria, I did not ask for this. I did not ask for this guy to step me up or my boss to fire me, or I did not ask to have uh, so many extra pounds and so forth. Well, yes, you have, without really knowing it, and we're gonna get to that, and but before that, uh, what I'd like to tell you is that um, believing in God I'm acknowledging that God and the universe do have an agenda of what it is that um, happens to us, like kind of general lines. Yeah, Betty would be born in that uh, country, and George uh, would marry to have 12 kids. Fine. However, the same God, the same infinite power, gives us free 
will and choice. So I believe that some elements are predestined and we need to really work hard in changing if we don't want them. And or learn how to live with them and just by, bypass them. But the other half is what it is that we create. And many of us do not want to go with that because with that comes responsibility. And if you notice when we do something great, oh yes, I did this, you know, when something is not happening, is because it wasn't meant to be. Anytime I hear that phrase, something inside me rebels. And I want to yell and really say, no, that's not how it works, you know. We deep down, we ask for it. Now, how do we ask things to come to us? When I say that we create our own reality, I'm referring to one of the most valuable faculties that we possess, our own subconscious mind. It is said that the computer was modeled after our own subconscious mind because it is a perfect computer. And the only difference is computers break down your subconscious never does. And please do understand, it takes you literally. Your subconscious is like your genie. You remember the genie in the bottle? Anything you ask, it says, coming up, coming up, coming up. So the main things that we do is uh, to create a reality. It is speech, the wording. I'm talking about semantics now thought and action. And I'd like you to know that your subconscious has also a, has a memory bank, has a visual bank. Uh, it is really endless. Some people call it soul. Some people call it a dummy, quote unquote, because again, it does exactly what you tell it to. And so our thoughts and speech for the most part create a reality. Now, I'm not suggesting that you're negative people. On the contrary, you're wonderful, uh, positive thinking people that are caught passively in a mode of slang. Uh, why do we use slang? Because we want to impress, we want to be different, we want to be noticed, but we do that to our expense. And please bear with me, be patient. I'm passionate about the subject. So I go from one thing to another, however it will make sense at the end. And uh, let's talk about phraseology, semantics. The words we use sometimes are detrimental, the way we use them. Um, if you would listen to a recording of yourself for five minutes, when you're talking to a friend, you're going to see how many times your heart breaks, how many times you can't stand it, you can't take it anymore, uh, you drive me crazy, you drive me nuts, and so many other things. Your subconscious, please do remember and make a note of this, your subconscious does not know right from wrong, nor does it have a sense of humor. It takes you literally. Once you listen to yourself talking to a friend for five minutes and transcribing the conversation, look at what words you've used and think, could I live with this in my life if they manifest, if they materialize? And decide, because they do materialize. Time may pass, but they do, that's the law. I do not make my own laws. I'm only sharing with you what I have learned from the masters. And uh, there are many people that have said it, maybe far better than I have, and I'm doing my best to customize this for our generation, for the your generation, and the times that we live today for the 2000s. Um, it is um, very important 
to pay attention. I would like to share some examples with you. Uh, we want so many things in life. We want to get a job. We're waiting for an answer. We wait uh, for the boyfriend to call, for the girlfriend to do the same. We're waiting for the wife and says, yes, I'm going to grant you the divorce. And yes, you can see the children anytime you want. We're waiting for all this. However, before we ask something, we preface with a no. I mean, how many times you will, you will say something to your mom and she'll say, no, you're right. Now, no is like any other word and has its place and makes it very useful when it is used properly. Meaning, someone asks, are you hungry? Yes, if you are. If you're not, no, I'm not hungry. But prefacing is what it is that causes the problem. Because the moment we preface, we do it absent-mindedly. What does that mean? That we operate from that alpha wavelength, that, that the subconscious is on and not the conscious mind. Because if we thought logically, we wouldn't be doing that. And your subconscious, sometimes people have asked me, well, Maria, do we have two minds? No, we don't. We have one mind with two functions. I'm speaking of that twilight state before you go to sleep and how you like in and out. That is why you vibrate on the alpha wavelength and that is when your subconscious is on and it will compute everything you think, everything. And its job is to bring it to you. That is your prayer. And again, remember, it does not know right from wrong. For instance, let's say you want to write a story about an apple. And you're looking at the apple and you're writing and you make a mistake and you call it a pear. Well, your printer will produce a piece of paper that calls the apple a pear. The subconscious is not going to, your computer is not going to say, well, Maria made a mistake. That's actually not an apple, it's a pear. So it does take you literally. I want to impress this upon you very, very strongly. Be ever watchful when you speak because every word is a prayer. It will materialize. There are many, 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 many examples. Uh, there is a book that I recommend, an old book, The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Dr. Joseph Murphy. It is amazing. You read the book, you kind of read them all. And um, he has a lot of examples. He has an example about the man that uh, thought he had to bargain with God and say, God, let my son come back home safe from Vietnam and I'll give my right arm to see that. Every other time he would give his right arm. He was, he was bargaining. One day going to church, they, they looked at the time, they were missing church. He stopped on the freeway, got his family to kneel, you know, the side of the freeway to pray. A truck went by and took his left arm, it wasn't the right one, but took his left arm with it. So, yes, that's how he attracted that. I mean, think of all the people, if you were in a business like standing up, uh, being a hairstylist or any other profession, I wouldn't be using the expression, uh, I can stand it. Uh, sometimes you feel like you're a victim and you keep saying, oh my God, I give so much, I give so much, I never get anything back. Well, again, if you record yourself, you're going to see how many times you'd say, I can take it, I can take it, I can take it. So this is endless. I wish to God you would do this exercise and write. And please know that like there is a big, huge ear in the universe 
And what comes out of your mouth, that ear hears you, takes your order in and says, coming up, coming up. I remember one time going to Las Vegas, uh, driving to Las Vegas with a friend, uh, a lady friend and her father. And her father had, had uh, surgery, open heart surgery. They, and I remember it was described to me how they took all his insights, put them in a bowl aside to make room and did the, you know, did the surgery and so forth. Now his wife, children were very metaphysical. So he started telling me his story, very Jewish, uh, like passionate about his story. Oh, Maria. That Karen, my Karen, my daughter, she just broke my heart. She quit college and it tears me apart. And then she married a Schwartz. I said, what is that? Well, she went ahead and married a black man and that tore me up. So after the fourth, fifth time that his insides were, were torn up, according to him, he kept saying it, his daughter, other daughter, asked me to stop the car. She, very brave girl, she stopped the car and she said, out of this car. Out of this car. Two months ago, you were on a table with the torn guts. You were torn open and you're not learning. She said, I try to tell you, me knowing the people, I am sharing that this is true, not ex exaggeration. For the most part, this man asked for it. Like I said, the subconscious took him literally. And she, the daughter said to him, you're still talking. I mean, you cannot have any more surgeries like that. So uh, it is very, very important that we pay attention. I remember also having a class on manifestation here in Beverly Hills. Uh, many, many, many years back, a class that went on for the longest time. And we worked on manifesting our own reality and wrote things down about getting cars. Um, there were about 30 people in the class. And, you know, in California, you, you need wheels to get around. So people wrote, they described the car they wanted, and we met back in two weeks to see uh, what results um, they had. We had about one third of the people that had manifested already the car they wanted. Of course, we write the manifestations and then we meditate. There was a young boy that um, got a car, custom made Porsche, $200,000 worth at that time, and he bought it for $3. He was so passionate about uh, getting his driver's license. He was just training with adults in the car because of age. He was 16. But he would just go to the Times and look up, you know, uh, advertisements about cars. So he saw an ad that said um, a car for, um, I mean, this Porsche for $3. Well, the child had been using his subconscious mind. He had been dreaming about that particular kind of model. Uh, that's what he would want. Well, there was a turning out that there was a famous divorce going on in town. And uh, the woman, the wife, got a lawyer out of state, and he said, okay, I found a way to do this. How are you going to hurt your husband? Who's going to hurt him the most if he loses it? She said, his baby, which is his car. He says, sell it for a dollar. She says, no, I'll, I'll be big, I'll sell it for three. Now, you and I will say, oh, that's a gimmick. Somebody wants my three bucks. We wouldn't have bought it. The child bought it. Now, it's a different story that there, the insurance on the car was um, uh, $6,000. But he ended up paying for college with a car after sold. Now, there was one of my closest friends, Neil. Oh, I just wanted Jalopy to take me around. Somebody had gave him a bit up, old yellow Volkswagen with big uh, patches of gray color on the top. So there are many ways that we can use that power. 
we have it. Let's harness it. Let's learn more about it. There are a lot of books out there that, and especially like I said, The Power of Your Subconscious Mind, uh, the Zester Hicks, there's, there's, there's so much. And there is no reason that we shouldn't be aware of what it is that we can do to help ourselves. I mean, we're dealing with technology, we're dealing with progress. We need to step up the mind response. We need to do something. We need to take action. But the first part is awareness. And again, remember, your subconscious does not know right from wrong, nor does it have a sense of humor. A, another guy, anytime he thought he was funny, anytime he went to cross uh, the street, too many lanes, it was traffic, he would just take an exaggerated walk, uh, pretending that he was, um, that he had a lame or whatever it's called, I don't find the words right now, leg. Um, two months later, his son was injured. and almost lost the leg. And uh, a month later, he did the same. The subconscious had a visual bank. He was joking about pretending that he couldn't walk straight and people should stop and let him, and let him buy. Well, he paid for it. Um, we really need to think. We're asking someone Oh, why don't you come over? Could you please come over? Why don't you come over? He says, well, I'm tired. Uh, oh, come on, just for a little while. We can do this and we can do that and we can do that. The person says, okay, I'll come for a while. Ten minutes later, she calls. Well, you know, I'll take a rain check. Because you told this person not to come. We do not begin questions with a don't. Why don't you? Why won't you marry me? Well, I won't. Instead of saying someone, I'm the best thing that has ever happened to you. I think we can have, you know, a great relationship. But always the don't, 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 don't. I mean, these, I hope you're relating so far on what it is that I'm talking about and the seriousness of this aspect of the subconscious. And it is, of course, you can use the subconscious in a positive manner and do create a phenomenal reality. I just started with the negative aspect of it. Um, be ever cautious about what you put in your walls. I, I was given a Picasso. I wouldn't do it. I would not put it in my house. I donated it somewhere. Believe me, hurt a little bit. Uh, I would have loved to be the owner of Picasso. However, I don't like distorted pictures. And uh, the... Uh, the more examples to share, some though very intimate, so I will not. Um, to actually, there was a woman uh, that was given a nude, beautiful nude, a woman coming out of her bath. So she put her in her bathroom, and she, but in the, uh, in the piece of art, one of the breasts was like upward, and the other, very artistically done, the other was possibly almost to the floor. Well, she had a surgery and augmentation, and she ended up with the exact same thing, like the picture that she kept seeing. We have pictures of our walls, and we don't even know that they're there. We're going by, and we look at them. They leave an impression in us. And then we keep attracting this. Um, so take care, look at your walls. Look at teenagers. What do they have in the rooms? When my son was about 13, 14, by God, at that time, he's much older now. Uh, I got into his room one time by God, Guns and Roses, some, some albums, uh, I mean, things of the wall, borders with, with snakes, with like, <clears throat> so of course, those kids will, will, you know, will go nuts. They go to sleep with, that, with all that. Look at what they have in their walls now or in their computers. So they need to become aware. How are they going to become aware from you, from the parent? And uh, it, it is, there are, there are ways of counteracting all this. However, it is a lot of, a lot of work. One of the things to avoid is a television in your room. If you have a television in your room, you 
really need to make an effort to turn it off before the twilight state because we get two times a day to access naturally our subconscious mind, which is when we drift to sleep and like in that twilight state and when we first wake up. Now, late at night, you go, you know what kind of shows that are on television. If you're an early bird and you're going to take all this David Letterman stuff or Jay Leno, well, go ahead uh, with your TV on. The idea, meaning do not go to sleep with the television on. Those few precious moments that you have to program your subconscious with, it's going to be programmed by what you see on the television because you are on the twilight state. So it is okay to watch your program consciously because your conscious knows that it's just a program. And then turn it off and then go to sleep. Do not let it put you to sleep. The idea is to dance to your own music. Choose what it is that you're going to take with you on the sleep state that will be developed into matter. It's an idea. So you don't want to have someone else programming you to go and buy 10 cards the next day, all those ads that they come on. So the same thing is the morning. So my suggestion now to you is how to program properly. Your subconscious works positive, negative with the same rate. When you're consciously aware, it'd be a good idea for you to write your affirmations, your prayers, what it is that you're going to have in life. Uh, the idea is to write with the I am and I have. Not that I, not I want, not I desire. If you use the words want and desire, all you're going to do is you're going to increase the longing and the desire, but doesn't mean that you're going to really get what it is that you're asking for. But if you claim it as, I am happy and or I have happiness. I am wealthy, I have wealth. I am prosperous, I am healthy. I weigh my uh, ideal weight. I am attracting the ideal mate in my life. I have amazing relationships. Not I want to or I'd like to. So what you do, you write as many affirmations as you want, prayers, and read them to yourself before sleep, before drifting or sleep. Let yourself kind of go like this, you know, over that notebook. If you notice, I did not say before you fall asleep. People fall asleep and that is not good and they fall in love, that's the worst. Falling in love, falling gets you hurt. If it doesn't work, you stay and you stay and you stay because you're hurt and you don't get out easily to while. If you walk into love, eyes open, you can walk out if it's not working for you. So getting back to our affirmations, we write what I am and I have. And speaking of that, best affirmation is thanksgiving. Give thanks for about everything. We are not going to be on a watch all day long. So just because of that, in the evening when we do, we'll write a quick note saying that I'm releasing all negativity that I have amassed during the day. Because, I mean, it comes from us, television, friends, our own thoughts. Oh, my God. What we become, what we think, we get what it is that we talk about. So when you're feeling not the greatest, see, I didn't say bad, when you're feeling not the greatest about yourselves, take again your journal, which is your best friend, and write 10 great things about you. 
And if you don't find that coming easily, give thanks for three great things that have happened to you. Have you ever thought of giving thanks for your eyesight to the universe? The mobility of your extremities, you can walk, many people can't. Have you ever given thanks for your friends, for the clarity of your mind, for your awareness? Praise yourselves besides the universe. It is okay to pat yourselves on the back. It is really wonderful. So design the reality you want and let that be the last thing that you take with you as you go to sleep. Now, another way to do, the, one more way rather to do this is meditation. In meditation, what we do, we recreate that alpha wavelength to where the conscious mind is sort of kind of asleep and the subconscious is on. And we do the same. We always write uh, constructive, creative elements on our journal. And all you do, sit in the sofa, close your eyes, and think of what it is that you've written. It is really wonderful. Meditation works, prayer works. We do not pray enough. We do not meditate enough. And we want miracles to happen. They won't. It does not work that way. One must give to receive. One must tell the universe what they want. That reminds me of people in relationships. I have a sister says, that complains to the rest of my family about me. Well, she knows what I want. She knows what I need. Why did she do this or that for me? Ask. She doesn't ask. You need to ask. You need to feel worthy enough, special enough, and take a chance and ask what you want from people. Do not judge them. Do not complain. When you complain because they're not doing this and that for you or because they did this and that to you, you know what you're declaring yourself as? Victim. That you are a victim. If you are a victim, well, cliche, however I will say, shame on you. People will treat us the way we treat ourselves. If we put ourselves last, be meek, they're going to put us last. They don't feel we need anything. We must learn to assert ourselves, and that comes from faith and belief. It does take time. It is okay to write again before your meditation, you know, I am worthy, and you are. You're worthy of all the goodness there is in this universe. It is your birthright to be well, to be successful, to be powerful, as long as you make your commitment that you will respect those elements that you, the universe will gift you with once you ask and not abuse them. Life is so simple if we would only assume responsibility and clean up our vocabularies. My disappointment has been that in my workshops for the last 40 years, I ask people this simple exercise, to do this simple exercise, to record themselves while speaking to someone on the phone. Most of the time they don't. They're good when they come to the class, they're amazing, and then they forget after a while. I mean, I go into a room and everybody, no, you're right, no, it's going to rain. No, I didn't do that. No, I, I mean, the no is one of the most popular slang 
word in our vocabulary. And it has not, it's an innocent little useful word. It's what we do um, with it. I have someone, oh, Maria, why I can't, I can't lose weight. I can't lose weight. By the way, please believe this. As long as you affirm that you cannot lose weight, first of all, you affirm disability, inability by saying I can't, because you definitely can, and lose weight. The word loss is very tricky. If you lose your keys, or worse, your iPhone, your smartphone, what is your tendency? You're going to find it immediately. Now, if you lose the weight, what does it tell your um, mind that, oh, she just by chance, accidentally, she happens to reduce the weight. You're going to find it again, the same way you want to find your phone. So it is much better to say, well, I'm reduced same weight. I reduced 25 pounds or I, I'm getting fit and healthy and so forth. These are the elements you need to take, and I expect you to go further beyond what I'm telling you. I'd like you to study. There's a lot of great material that uh, will talk to you about this concept of creating one's own reality. Uh, and please do meditate, do pray. I'm sure if you have a meeting with friends, you can share a lot of these elements uh, with them. I, I remember one time there was a, a young mother and uh, I, when I would call her, I say, oh, I'll call you back later because I, I hear you have company. She says, um, oh no, the baby's asleep, so I just have the television on for her to lull her to sleep. And I'm writing letters, I'm not watching it. You know how not cool that is? Uh, when you're, doing, you're writing a letter, you're doing other things, and you're not paying attention to the television, you get programmed, daytime and all, you get programmed with that. And after a while, your, your own life is like a soap opera. And think of what that does to the child. And the same mother on her first child, she shared with me later on, she says, I always leave the music on in her room so she will learn to sleep even with noise. I, I still have issues about digesting that. So I'd like you to think of your own lives, what it is that you can improve. I'd like you after this talk to feel powerful and awesome as you are no one else is as special as you are. You're God's most special child, the universe's most special child. And the best that the universe has to offer is your heritage. You are worthy of that. So begin writing what you want. And at this point, the one thing to write is giving thanks for this moment and the awareness that has really penetrated your mind. I love you all. Hello, I'm Jonna Elizabeth, and if you would like more information about Maria Papa Petros, please visit us at www.mpapapetros.com. And as Maria says, we love you. Thank you.